Hello, I'm Zardix, and you may recognize me from my many Let's Plays on my channel, both modded and unmodded. Today, I'm excited to be collaborating with Paradox Interactive to bring you a tutorial with some tips about how to build an efficient cargo rail network. When planning out your cargo network, it's important to understand how the supply chain works in the game. Cargo begins its journey as raw resources, whether ore, oil, agriculture, or forestry. Alternatively, these can be imported from the external region. The raw resource is then sent to a processing facility specific to its resource type. They are then sent to either generic industrial zoning or unique factories from the industry's DLC. Finished goods are shipped to your commercial zoning for sale to the public. It's important to note that any stage in the supply chain can also be exported to the external region without going through the rest of the chain. Your cargo will usually be transported between each stage in the supply chain by road or rail. The route it takes will depend on which pathway is faster and more direct without taking into consideration any traffic along the way. If you want to have your cargo shipped by rail, it is important to design your system in a way that will make it likely the cargo will choose the rail rather than the road. I prefer to have a direct rail connection between each stage of the supply chain. Unlike passenger rail, where you can directly manage where the trains stop, cargo rail will choose its own path. In order to force trains to go a specific direction, I like to use one ways. As a bonus, having a single rail rather than a double rail can add to the realistic look of an area. I will also use one-way rails as a way to prevent trains from using tracks that are for a more decorative purpose then hide the glitch behind some trees. It's also useful to keep different rail routes separated. For example, any of your external connecting rail lines should not join your internal routes. This will help control the number of trains on each track as you can have a designated route for each step of the journey through the supply chain. Similar to the video tutorial I did on this channel regarding road hierarchy, there is a system of rail hierarchy. Think of your external rail as your main lines. These should have very few intersections and stops, ensuring the import-export trains smooth travel. Next are your local lines, which connect the various stages of the supply chain. These can potentially have more intersections or branches off to other areas, but should still be separated from the third type of rail, stations. Stations should have a separate track leading in, with space for trains waiting to enter the station. Finally, I like to combine all of these concepts together to create a rail hub. In a hub, I will have multiple stations in close proximity without any of them being directly connected to the others. One station will handle imports and exports and will provide the connection to the main line. Each other station will connect to a different part of the city or supply chain via the local lines. By connecting the stations by roads, Local traffic can transfer the goods from one station to another, while keeping me more in control of the flow of goods via rail. Thanks for watching! If you liked the video, please hit the like button and be sure to subscribe to this channel for more tutorial videos.